Hey, Toby. I really hate to be asking this, especially at this time, but my mom is working late tonight, so I could really use a ride home. Can you please come pick me up as soon as you can? Sure, dude. I'm just stopping to get some gas right now. I should be there in a minute or two. Thank you so much. I'm outside waiting for you. Yeah, no problem, dude. See you then. Later. I kind of feel bad for Toby. He just left church, so this is pretty awkward timing to ask him to turn back around. If I had more time, I'd see if Sarah needs any help. She always stays after youth group to help her dad clean up the place. Maybe I'll offer to pitch in next time, if they let me. What's that smell? Is something burning? No, that's just me. Who said that? Your worst nightmare! Ha! No. Uh, what's going on? And who are you? Consider me your executioner! I'm afraid I don't understand. Why is your skin all yellow? Did you just come back from Comic Con or something? No more questions! Look, I don't know what this is about, but you really shouldn't be running around trying to hit people with a plastic sword. Who said it was plastic? <gasps> did, did he just... Did he really cut clean through that tree? No way. This can't be real. And now, before I go... That's Toby's car! Hey! Over here! Hurry! What in the world? Where did he go? That was so strange. Hey. Hey, Jonathan! What? Oh, sorry. Hop in. You asked for a ride. I know. Sorry about that. What's up with you? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Well, I... I... I guess it's just one of those nights for me. <laughs> you were just fine shortly before I left. I don't know what you mean by just one of those nights. I can't tell him what I saw. He might not believe me. And I don't think Mom would believe me either. I seriously hope I dreamt the whole thing. It just seems so random. Who was that guy? And why was he after me? <sighs> this is so weird. So, what do you plan to sell at your yard sale tomorrow? Well, first things first. My blue wind-up lobster is totally off limits. I could never part with it. I've had it since I was little. If I ever have kids, I'd love to let them play with it and hear those settling clicks it makes. Fair enough. Those clicks are like those pops and scratches you hear on an old vinyl. It's so satisfying. Well, well. The kid who normally souls up early ends up coming in last. Are you okay, Jonathan? You look a bit shaken up there. Sorry, Sarah. I don't know if I should tell you about it. Come on, I've always understood you. You can tell me anything. <sighs> well, something very strange happened last night after youth group. I was waiting for Toby to come pick me up, but then this guy came out of nowhere and he started attacking me. And for what? I don't know. So this guy just randomly attacks you. No offense, but that just doesn't sound likely. I knew it. There hasn't been any violent activity in our town for who knows how long. Hold on. 
What did this guy look like? Are you sure you want to know? Because it, it might sound totally ridiculous. No, go ahead, I'm listening. I mean, he looked ridiculous. He looked like he came from some circus horror film. What was with that crazy green hair? And that yellow skin? Yellow skin? Huh. I'm sorry. I think I'm making this awkward for you. No, you're fine. Hello, everyone. Sorry I got here at the last second. Now we can begin. Even in the Christian life, there are tons of people that spark trust issues between them and their own audience. And I say audience since I am referring to, believe it or not, televangelists. While television itself is not the problem in this type of ministry, the main problem lies in the scandalous belief known as the health-wealth gospel. The televangelists try to convince their audience, you, for example, that if you give money, God is guaranteed to owe you so much more. And if you have not seen such change in your life, they tell you that perhaps you do not have enough faith to receive it. Seems those people are basically a god of their own making. Number one, I wholeheartedly agree with you. Number two, please no talking until afterwards. Sorry. Anyway, we don't give only for the purpose of being blessed by God. We give because we love Him and want to glorify Him and thank Him for all He has given us. I'm sorry. Am I interrupting anything? <gasps> Is there something wrong? He's back! Who? Try to convince them all you want, boy. It won't work. For now, only you can see me or hear me. But I will admit you look so good making a fool of yourself in front of the class. <laughs> to them, you seem to be in a trance. Stop messing with me. Who are you talking to? Snap out of it, dude. A tisket, a tasket, they're going to blow a gasket. I'm afraid I must be off now, but don't you dare try to tattle on me again. Remember, none of this happened. It's all in your head. It's all a dream. <sighs> Jonathan! Ta-ta! <laughs> Jonathan, wake up! He's out cold! He really isn't himself right now. Jeepers, he's as pale as a bedsheet. Someone get the nurse, quick! <laughs> In fact, I think we should all evacuate. Something must be burning in here. What smells like sulfur? Oh, he's been asleep for hours. He's still alive, but we don't know what caused him to pass out. He seemed to have been acting unusual shortly before. I can't say I know what's going on either. I've been able to understand just about anything that happens to him, but this is different. We'll be praying for him. I am hoping with all my heart he'll pull through. Thank you. Lord, please help my son. I don't understand what has happened to him. So, have you heard back from Jonathan at all? <sighs> Not yet, Dad. The fact that he's been unconscious all day really has me worried. I've never seen anything like that happen to him before. That does seem very unusual. The best we can do is pray for him and ask God to heal him. It really is. If it weren't for him, Jonathan and I wouldn't have had this special bond. That is true. <laughs> well, if you're not going to finish your dessert, you can go now. Thank you. I've got homework to do anyway. And I completely forgot to check the mail today. Thank you for being respectful and opening the door for me. What a polite fellow. <laughs> hmm, something smells foul.
Nice place you have here. Sorry if I don't stay for very long. Get out of here! Get going, you frustrating feline! I said get! My sulfuric smell is becoming a problem. Now that should be no concern yet. The mission comes first. Is that you, Dad? Good guess, but no. Oh, got homework tonight? That's a darn shame, because I think it's the perfect time for a little recess. Hey, what is this? Let me go! Quiet, you! You'll wake the neighbors! <laughs> Sarah, are you okay? Where is she? This should be the perfect spot. Comfy? Not with you around. What's the matter with you? You're not even scared that you're only minutes away from your demise. Scared? I'm annoyed more than anything. Well, that's about to change soon. Now, I hope you don't mind if I use your phone. I have a very important call to make. And your breath stinks, too. I like to say it reeks of deceit. Now, be quiet, please. Missed calls from Sarah? How long was I asleep? Hello? Sarah? Yes, she's here, but she's in no position to speak to you. You freak! What have you done to her? First of all, it's not polite to judge people, especially me, by their appearance. And secondly, if you really want to see her again, you'll have to do exactly as I tell you. Meet me at the stadium tunnels in less than 15 minutes. We'll see if you really are man enough to accept my challenge. Or maybe you're still chicken. Jonathan, don't do it. I don't want you getting hurt. I'm coming right over, and I swear, you better not hurt her. <laughs> Let's hope you don't show up too late. You'll miss all the fun. <laughs> So he's real! And knowing that Sarah is somehow involved in this is living proof. I've got to do something, fast. <coughs> Sorry, Rover. I'm gonna be out for a while. Just don't tell Mom, okay? What is wrong with you? It's bad enough you creeps are chasing me down, now you want to involve Jonathan? How is it so hard for you to understand? Anyone close to you is an enemy of mine! For the past several months, I've been hoping to accomplish this mission. And tonight, both of you will be finished. Or should I say, all of you. Wait a minute. I don't even know what I'm doing. Am I really foolhardy to sneak out and save Sarah from that weirdo? I'm stooping pretty low at this point. I can't do this myself. Nine one one, what's your emergency? I suppose I have time for a premature victory selfie. Everyone say sleaze. Oh, I look so good. Are you quite finished? Okay, fine. Here you go. Hey, watch it. What? I gave you your phone back, didn't I? Ugh, you're such a nuisance. Well, here I am. 
It's about time you got here, boy. I'm honestly quite surprised you accepted my challenge. Jonathan, please do not intervene. It's okay, Sarah. I got this. I hope. What's the matter? Realizing you didn't bring anything useful for this encounter? Drat! Not, not this, this again. again. Just let her go! She hasn't done anything to you! She hasn't done anything to you? <laughs> How little do you know? I guess I still don't know a whole lot. Who are you? What do you want with us? I am the Fibbler, the master of deception, the spreader of havoc and turmoil, and as I've said before, your executioner! Fibbler? Don't you think Fibber sounds more realistic? Or maybe just Liar, since that's much simpler. Hey! I made that name for myself, you brat! But now, enough talk. On to the good part. Yikes! Jonathan! That's right! Run, child! Run! The fun's about to start! Man, I sure have been doing a lot of running. At least now I know who that guy is. But why is he after me? And what does he want with Sarah? This is so confusing. Confused or not, I've got no time to waste thinking about it. I gotta keep moving. I seriously hope that was the police. Come out, come out, wherever you are! I know you're afraid of me! Well, what does it matter? I'll put him in his place eventually. When he least expects it, I'll have already gone back to the girl to finish her off. And when he finds out, he'll really start to crack. Like an egg! <laughs> I cannot wait to see his face. Going somewhere? <gasps> Aha! Hello again, Bible man. It's been a very, very long time, hasn't it? Well, it sure isn't 1996 anymore. You sure smell strong. What is that? Brimstone? It's sulfur. I thought something smelled familiar. Look at you. Back at it, rescuing the kitties for the billionth time. You haven't changed at all. And neither has your Bible-toting breath. That's the nicest thing you've said to me in years. Quit blocking the exit! Why? So you can terrorize some teens? You know exactly why I'm doing this! And that's why I have to step in. I don't see him anywhere, but he's probably hiding to draw me out. I can't risk it. I'm really not ready for this. <sighs> I guess he's right about me being a coward. But then again, if I don't do something fast, he might hurt Sarah. <sighs> I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do this. <sighs> I can do this. Jonathan, I'm in here! Sarah? Is it safe to come in there? He's nowhere around. It's safe. Guess he gave up waiting for me. Or maybe he's pulling his vanishing act again. Jeepers, that was wild. You really didn't need to come. I didn't want you getting killed. I'm alright now, Sarah. I'm actually surprised I made it this far. I just needed to remind myself that God is with us in every situation. That's good. Thank you. That fibbler, whatever he calls himself, won't get away with this. The cops should be here any second now. Wait, you called the cops? Well, yeah. How is that not a good thing? For the last time! Get 
out of my way. Proverbs 12.21 says no harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. You're giving me a pounding headache with those scriptures. Oh, that's my cue to leave. Sorry, I have to cut this short. I didn't call for backup. Well, where is he? We don't see the kidnapper anywhere, sir. We've searched everywhere. No one else is in sight. What is this, a gag? It better not be. He must have disappeared when the police arrived. You really shouldn't have called for them, Jonathan. So you're saying this is my fault? What's going on here? Is all this a prank call? Wait a minute. He took a selfie with my phone. I can show it to you. Uh, what? What happened? He took the picture while he was invisible. Ugh. Now we don't have any proof. What kind of a game are you kids playing? I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. I wish I could explain the whole thing. Explain nothing. Do you realize the Colon Police is absolute serious business? You brought us all the way out here with nothing to show for yourself. I mean, you wasted plenty of our time. I think we should be done here. Come on, Sarah. I'll walk you home. Hey, where are you going? I'm not done with you yet. Don't try to walk your way out of this. Let them go. They didn't do anything wrong. Oh, well, sir, I... Uh... It's okay. There was someone here just a minute ago. I fought him, but he took off as soon as you arrived. Who is it exactly we're looking for? He's called the Fibbler. He's an old enemy of mine, capable of cloaking himself from certain individuals at will. Thankfully, Eunice and I still have his data file. Study it carefully. You'll need it. That's him? <laughs> Looks like a rather nasty-looking character. <laughs> My thoughts exactly. Keep a sharp lookout for him. 1 Corinthians 16.13 says to be on your guard and stand firm in the faith. If you see him, let me know right away. Well, how about that? When we thought we lost Bible Man, he somehow returns good as new. More than just that, we were looking right at the original. I remember meeting him when I was a kid. All right, man, back to the station. And just like the man said, be alert. You gotta be on your guard. We got a fiddler to catch. Thanks again for getting me out of there. Not a problem, Sarah. I was glad to do it. Are you doing okay now? I actually do feel better, now that I'm wide awake and fully aware of what happened. I just wish that Fibbler didn't hold you hostage. He had me as bait, and you swallowed it. But then you were brave enough to get me out of there. I had to do it. You mean so much to me. And I let God be my guide through that trial. You did well, Jonathan. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow, troublemaker free, hopefully. Yeah, see you then. Good night. <sighs> Yet at the same time, there are still some things I don't quite understand. Hey, Brandon. Why the long face? <sighs> I'm getting very worried right now. What's wrong? You know Bessie Palmer, right? Yeah, we spoke spoken a couple times. Well, she hasn't shown up for the past couple weeks. And that's weird since she's never missed a session ever since she first joined this youth group. Maybe her schedule got a little messy. Or maybe she's sick. Who knows? I'm not sure it's either of those. Brandon, don't be silly. I'm sure there's a very rational explanation. She hasn't responded to any of my calls or text messages for two weeks. Don't you think that's strange? I will admit, that does seem quite odd. The best advice I can really give is to keep waiting. I'm sure she'll turn up sooner or later. I hope so. 
Are you going to be around tomorrow? You can come into town with me and Sarah. Uh, I guess that should give me a way to occupy myself. There you go. And speaking of, I'm going to finally offer to help her and her dad clean up. This is the second week in a row for Bessie to miss youth group, especially without a full explanation. Yeah, that is pretty abrupt. I haven't received any word about it at all. Hey, just thought I might help you two out while I wait for my ride home. It's okay, Jonathan. We got this. Thank you, though. Are you sure? I mean, I would like to make myself more useful around here. Look, Jonathan. It's great that you want to help out around here more, and we appreciate it. But, there's a very good reason that we can handle this ourselves. And that reason is... That your mother is outside waiting for you. Oh! <laughs> Sorry, I thought I had more time on my hands. See you tomorrow! Take care, Jonathan. He's really cute when he does that. Nah, I think you're talking about his smile. Dad! <laughs> it's okay. Let's wrap things up here. It's getting late. As much as I do appreciate jazz, I kind of feel this is a bit overwhelming, especially for this kind of weather. It looks like Brandon doesn't mind. In fact, he looks kind of lost. Sorry, I just have too much on my mind right now. Still thinking about Bessie? <sighs> Unfortunately, yes. I too think it's weird for Bessie to disappear without an excuse. I've tried calling her parents, but they didn't pick up either. Is there really something going on that we're not fully aware of? Looks like it's getting worse out there. We better finish our coffee fast. I hope you're not suggesting I chug it. I don't want you to burn your throat. Though it looks like Brandon barely touched his drink. Our top story is the most recent crime wave throughout Andersonville. Several cases of theft and assault have been discovered throughout the past two days, most of them happening across Ellsworth Street. Police have restricted access to a large section of the Ellsworth Street neighborhood. Ellsworth Street? Bessie lives there! Wait! Brandon! This isn't gonna end well. Sorry! What? Oh no. They closed off the house. Brandon, don't go past the police tape. There's nothing you can do about it now. This can't be real. This cannot be real. Brandon. You told me there'd be a rational explanation to this. Does this look rational to you? I'm sorry, okay? I didn't know. But I'm honestly just as surprised about this as you are. Now I've got the feeling something terrible has happened to her. And I didn't know until too late. That crime wave is really giving me the shivers. Maybe she's not gone for good. Maybe she and her family are somewhere else and they couldn't let us know. After all, this isn't the only house that's taped off. But if this happened just yesterday, why have we not heard from them in two weeks? Exactly! Well, we can't talk about it while standing out here in the rain. Come on, let's head back to my house. I still don't understand any of this. Knowing someone has disappeared just like that is really giving me the creeps. This is the first time something like this has happened to me. You said it, Rover. We're really having a rough day. What about that news report? We went outside before we could finish hearing that story. 
That's right. Jonathan, can you please search for that report so we can hear it in its entirety? I would really like to know if there are any leads as to what happened to Bessie. Okay, but I don't think we're going to like what we find. I think this is it. Our top story is the most recent crime wave throughout Andersonville. Several cases of theft and assault have been discovered throughout the past two days, most of them happening across Ellsworth Street. Police have restricted access to a large section of the Ellsworth Street neighborhood. Just yesterday, local resident Bessie Palmer was attacked by who strangely appeared to be William Burns. Even after successfully arresting Burns, police are unsure if this person is who he identifies as, since he had died about a year and a half ago. Palmer was immediately taken to St. Andrew's Hospital, where she died one hour later from fatal wounds. <sighs> I'm so sorry, Brandon. I really am. I know Bessie meant so much to you. We're here for you, Brandon. We'll be praying for you. Just know that Bessie isn't hurting anymore. She's with God now. She's much happier where she is. But I'm sure she misses you. Why didn't she tell me what was happening? Why did she keep it to herself for two weeks without at least saying goodbye? She and William knew each other. I guess Bessie must have known he was up to something and she didn't want to tell you so as to not scare you. I'd rather be hurt by the truth. I just hate being kept in the dark for whatever reason. That reminds me. Hello? Hey, Toby. I'd really hate to bring up a sensitive topic, but did you hear what happened recently? I did. I don't like it. I'm reading the same words again and again, and I still don't believe it. It's impossible for William to have committed that crime. I know you have a history with him. You never told me that he died, though. It explains why I never saw him again. But after seeing that news report, I'm confused now. What exactly happened to him? First of all, as much as he hung out with us quite often, he really wasn't the brightest bulb. When school let out, he'd often get himself wasted. He'd just find about every way to try to make himself look cool, but that soon took its toll. Eventually, he got careless, and he started distributing drugs on school property. That got him suspended, and we never saw him after that. And then one day, I thought about paying William a visit to check in on him. He never even answered the door, though. When I peeked through a window, it wasn't a pretty sight. I saw him lying on his garage door, completely motionless. When the police arrived shortly after that, they told me it was an overdose. William really went off the deep end. Wow. So if William is dead, then who are we dealing with here? I don't know. But I don't want to get that deep into it. I don't even want to think about it. It's really creeping me out. Yeah, I can't help but worry. I wonder if that fibbler has something to do with it. His face and fingerprints are a perfect match, sir. There's no other way we can explain it. I still don't like it. We could not have apprehended a dead man. I remember seeing him dead and buried. If we're gonna get answers, we can only get them from the man himself. Bring him here. So, you call yourself William Burns, huh? Mm. The resemblance may be uncanny, but I still have my doubts. If that really is you, where were you this whole time until you attacked Bessie Palmer? Not real chatty today, huh? Well, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. And if you want the hard way, <laughs> we'll revisit your house and search for clues. So, what will it be? What's the matter? Scaredy cat got your tongue? <laughs> I guess you've made your decision. We've got a runner! Stop him! Stop! Stop or we'll shoot!
Where'd he go? What is that? Commissioner, he got away, but he left something behind. It's a glove, but it has the texture and feel of human skin, with William Burns' fingerprints engraved at the tips. I knew there was something wrong about this. Uh, we're dealing with an imposter. That's really weird. This guy attacks a civilian and frames a dead man. But why? Does Burns have some kind of connection with Palmer? Uh, that does it. I'm running up a search party. We'll do all that we can to solve this case, even if we have to hunt this guy down to the ends of the earth. He has escaped. He should reach us within mere minutes. At this point, the town won't know what hit it. You are so sneaky, your deceitfulness! I prefer... fibblerness. That sounds ridiculous. That's not even a real word. If I make it myself, then it's real. Oh, your brilliance puts me to shame. Not. As does this plan, putting Bible Man to shame for not acting quick enough. His bad timing for saving little Miss Palmer will soon make him look like a fool. And on top of that, with the youngsters too distracted by this tragedy, I can make my move much more easily! You let something happen to one brat to slow the others down, huh? You know, this is the first time I've actually seen you do something useful. Thank you, Lucy. Isn't there anything else I could do? I've been sitting around for too long! The least you can do for now is let the man in when he comes. You have ten seconds. Dude! I do agree with the other one about something. Decent evil henchmen are so hard to find these days. There you are. So tell me, how was your exploit? It worked like a charm. I may have left behind a clue, but they don't suspect the truth. And if Bible Man never comes looking for me, there'll be nothing he can do about this crime. Yet, wouldn't it be such a thrill to see the look on his face when he discovers this imposter is none other than his worst nemesis, Luxor Spondroth. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, I'd like my armor back, please. Oh, sure thing! My disguise makes me look so ridiculous anyway. I only wore it because I look just like that Burns guy. And you did so well fooling everyone. <laughs> well, I've used other means to turn an event in my favor. I've used gold dust and weird websites. But committing a common crime... Oh, <laughs> that is on a whole different level. And I love it. Oh, you're so full of yourself. Thank you. Now, Lucy, has the news been updated? It's updating as quickly as can be. The people will never rest until they get their answer on who the real deal is. With this glove serving as complete proof that the William Burns the police saw is, in fact, an imposter, the question remains, who is the real criminal? Police are currently searching the streets to find further clues, though they agree to let local hero Bible Man lead this investigation. So, he's after us now. That can slow us down. I wanted to go after him last. Eh, uh, why worry about it? At least the public is still left in confusion. 
Bible man's attempt to take us down will all be in vain, since he's acting too late. Trust me, perhaps I know how all of this will end. Uh-oh, dude! Ooh, speak of the devil. <laughs> of all people, it had to be you. And I'm mighty proud of myself for it. Go ahead and try to stop me. It's not like it will do you any good. <laughs> I mean, you couldn't even save the girl in time. This may be the least I can do to end this trouble. Romans 8.37 says, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Then try to conquer me, shiny boy. Just like old times, old man. So far, no other clue has been found, and the city continues to constantly ask for the truth. You're too late. She's already done for. And so are you. Some hero you are. Just wait until the world sees just how slow and washed up you've become. Psalm 7326 says, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Hmm, that's unfortunate. Your mouth still runs just the same. Go, dude! Kick his rear end! Hey! Where are you going, dude? It's not yet over. We made a big move, but the final trap is yet to be sprung. Hey! Wait up, dude! They won't know what will hit them. The world will never know that it will soon be the end of Bible Man and all others who are like him. <laughs> if only those news cameras can see you now. You look so good when you're wiped out. <laughs> I wish I could stay in chat, but we've got other fish to fry. And it's not like you can rescue them in time. Seeing just how far you've already stumbled. <laughs> Lord, I need your help. I cannot do this alone. Not without you. Give me wisdom and strength, Lord. I can't do this without you. I've already come far, coming out of my retirement and going back to the duty that you've called me to. This is what you want me to do. Am I really strong enough to fight again? Where's Brandon? He'll be back soon. We're letting him stay with us for the next couple of days. Hopefully he'll have fully recovered by then. I'll continue praying for him. Going through something like that can really hit someone hard. I'll be praying for him too. It says in Mark 11:24 that whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I know Brandon will find comfort in good time with God's help. I believe so. <clears throat> Sorry, my dad needs me back home. I'll check in on you guys first thing tomorrow. Thanks, Sarah. I'll see you guys later. See ya. Not now, Rover. I could really use some time in prayer right now. There's just so much I cannot understand. First that fibbler, then this attack on Bessie, and we don't know who really caused it. All of this is making my head spin. What next? I'm gonna need you to stay quiet right now, Rover. It's getting late. Yet, why do I get the feeling something big is about to happen? 
I guess only time can tell. Hey, I see you jammed to those guys as well. Uh, oh, sorry. That's okay. They're one of the few bands I've seen in person. They really are that good. I just thought some of their songs like these could help me feel better. That helps. But keep in mind, it's only a message to remind you that in times like these, God can make you feel better. It says in Romans 12.12 to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. I have been praying quite a lot lately. I've been asking God how things are going with Bessie, knowing that she's doing much better where she is now. That's good. You've got this, Brandon. Trust me. I know how you feel. There was a time I felt like my world was crashing, and that was before I came to know Christ. So, you weren't exactly raised a Christian? Nope. I was pretty debaucherous growing up. I never had a firm grip on the difference between right and wrong. I just did what I thought would please me, but eventually, all that came to a stop when my dad died. When I heard that he was killed in the car accident, I was absolutely devastated. I'm very sorry to hear that, man. It's alright. It took forever for me to get over it. At the time, I felt like nothing really mattered anymore, but one night, I suddenly felt like I needed an answer. I remember my mom bringing up the Bible, but I never caught on to it. So I snuck out of my room and went for her Bible on her bookshelf. I just started flipping through it and read whatever was in sight. I felt this sudden urge to learn what I missed out on my whole life. And when the truth became clear to me, I felt like I owed a huge apology. I said, Okay, God, you got me. You got me good. Whatever you want to do with me, I'm ready. I'm listening. I'll bet your mom was proud of you. She was. When she found me, I felt like I was caught red-handed. But she was very glad for me. She was more than happy that I was finally willing to accept Christ into my life. And from that point on, I felt like a completely different person. I began making some amazing new friends in Christ. You included. You know, that story honestly helped me more. It really proves that Christ is in control no matter what. There you go. But of course, I don't deserve all the credit. We wouldn't be here if it weren't for him. What is it, Rover? What's up with him? I think he's on a scent. Whatever it is, it's probably unpleasant. Wait for you to easily sniff me out, you crooked canine! Rover, there's nothing under the patio. Calm down. Get going! Get! Rover, there's nothing there. <laughs> Wait a minute. I smell something, too. Uh-oh. What is it? I know that smell. He's back! Who? You dumb dog! Get off me! Get off of me! I thought Bible Man was bad enough. Your dog has proven itself just as annoying! I knew I hadn't seen the last of you, Fibbler. Only this time, I'm not afraid of you. Wait, you know this guy? Yes, we met twice. And every time involved me chasing him down with my trusty sword. I wouldn't mind doing it once again. After all, three times a charm. Ugh, this again? Now get back up there! Mush! Hey, don't push. Why do you keep hunting us down? What do you want from us? My, aren't you an eager beaver? I'm no sucker for spoilers, but I'll tell you this much. You have a strong connection with the girl Sarah, and I find that unforgivable! Anyone associated with her is an enemy of mine, especially with how close she is to that Bible-spouting rodent. Fibbler has known Sarah for much longer than I suspected? This is really intriguing. What is that Sarah's not telling me? She's never kept secrets from me before. That's all you're gonna get out of me. 
Perhaps this execution can help you forget about all this. I still can't believe this is real. There's no need to be afraid, Brandon. It says in 1 Corinthians 15:58 to let nothing move you. Not even this guy can stop us. That's right. Ah! Must you always step in at the wrong time? So what now, Fibbler? Attacking a couple boys in cold blood? Pretty tacky. You leave me no choice now. When I'm through with you, these troublesome teenagers should be no problem for me. Just wait till they see what I have in store for them. I never expected him to show up. That's Bible Man. More costumed characters? I've heard so much about him. And on top of that, that's the original. Look at him go. Even if you were to stop me here and now, what good would it do you? You were too late to save Bessie. Do you honestly think you can redeem yourself this way? The truth is, I'm not perfect. No one is. But I know God sees us through these trials. Luke 137 says that nothing will be impossible with God. You use scripture to justify just about anything, don't you? Well, it is the truth. All those years ago, you used it to constantly provoke me and make me destroy myself. I'll make sure it won't happen again this time. Nothing is going to silence me, for the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews 4.12 I've told you before! Shut up and fight me yourself! Who said I was fighting you alone? Got him! Finally, we caught the freak. Well, that was an unexpected ending. And a rather shocking one, too. Your master would be pretty disappointed to see you now. You think? Like the master says, lose a battle to win the war. Don't think you've won, Bible man. And that goes for all of you. You can't have me. That feels so good. He's gone. <sighs> it seems he took the coward's way out before we could take him, so as to not admit defeat. <sighs> at least we got a good look at him, in case anyone else like him comes out to play. Let's hope that doesn't happen too soon. Are you boys all right? Yeah, we're okay. That was amazing! You really showed that guy his place. You did pretty good yourself. You clung to scripture and stood up to him, knowing that God is in control. Brandon? Hmm? I know you've been wanting to talk about this for a while. Don't get me wrong. I have been recovering well lately. I just still can't believe that it all happened behind my back. I hate it when some things happen all around me that I'm completely oblivious to. It's happened to me so many times. I can't begin to tell you just how many cases I've had with friends that have come and gone. But I guess I can afford to tell you at least one. My first sidekick was a very close friend of mine. I often worried that he would get in a jam and I wouldn't be there to save him. My fear somehow came true, only he had to save me instead. But even after all the times we watched each other's backs and fought side by side, he eventually had to leave. I was pretty disappointed, but along the way I made some new friends who stood by me no matter what. I knew that by trusting God, I could still walk this journey. Romans 8.28 says, We know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. That tells me this isn't a total loss. I still have some very close friends I can count on. That's true. God has blessed you with some amazing people in your life. If you continue to trust him, you'll soon find yourself much happier than you've ever been. God says in Jeremiah 29:11, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, 
I can have everyone gather around, please. Lord Jesus, we lift up Brandon to you right now. We ask that you continue to comfort him in his time of grief and remind him that he is still not alone. As you have accepted Bessie into your kingdom, continue to watch over Brandon during his time on earth. Remind him that you have a purpose for him. Give him the strength to accept it without fear or worry. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. I guess now I have no choice but to move forward to what God has in store for me. Very good. God is faithful. Just you wait and see. Now, if you'll excuse me, there's still some work on this case that needs to be done. Do what you have to. And good luck. Thank you. You made it back safely. I suppose you successfully humbled the Fiddler? I had some help, Eunice, but he should be gone for good, I hope. I still find it quite hard to believe that, after all these years, you still have some fight left in you. I only do it because I have to. If no one else is going to take a stand at a time like this, who will? Yet at the same time, I feel like I've done all that I could, after Josh and the others disappeared. I still have a ways to go to complete the mission. I'm not sure I can do this alone anymore. Your journey has still yet to end, Bible Man. Look at how far you have gotten as the hero God called you to be all those years ago. That may be true, Eunice. I am grateful for all the years spent being Bible Man. I was grateful to pass that torch and all the knowledge onto Josh when he was ready. Eunice, that's it! I think I have it all figured out now. What do you mean? Eunice, access Psalm 145, verse 4. Accessing. One generation shall commend your works to another, and shall declare your mighty acts. Exactly. For what comes next, I won't have to do it alone anymore. I think I know just the right people who would be willing to help. I just hope this works. Bible man, I hope you are making a wise decision. It's worth a try. Starting tomorrow, there's going to be some big changes. Just you wait and see. Hey! Hope I didn't miss anything. You're fine. I just got here myself. So, what did your dad want to talk to us about? I hope he's not upset about anything. Oh, no, nothing like that. If that were the case, he would have said it much sooner. He should be here any minute now. Hey! Glad you can make it. Hey, Dad! Are you doing okay, Sarah? You look pretty nervous. To be honest, I never thought this would happen, but you'll find all this out for yourself in just a minute. She's still holding something back. I probably shouldn't bring it up, though. After all, at least now I'll be able to find out what she's kept a secret this whole time. So, where are we headed? Oh, I just want to have a chat with you at my workplace. Okay, but why didn't you just tell us to meet you there? We just passed by the church. I said workplace, not office. They're two different things. You'll see what I'm talking about soon. Eagle Gate Manor? I thought that place was closed off a long time ago. Well, it still has some good use left in it. This is a weird garage. Watch your step. What is this place? You sure do ask a lot of questions. Sometimes, you just gotta let your surroundings tell you what you need to know. Here we are. I told you my workplace was different from my office. This looks like... No way! You took us directly to the Bible cave? Sarah, this is- I know. I've been here before. Countless times. Uh, what? Eunice, what up, girl? Welcome back, Sarah. Well, well. Surprised? Sarah's been here so many times before? So if you both know this place, then- 
Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, that's unbelievable! Your Bible man? Well, glad you learned something today. I knew that voice sounded familiar. This is crazy. All this time I've been dating Bible man's own daughter. To be honest, I never really thought I'd have kids of my own. But when I retired from being Bibleman, I gained a lovely wife, a beautiful daughter, a pastoring job. It feels amazing. Dad, why do you keep the coat spots eyeballs in a jar? I had to study them to further learn the truth behind coats. But you said to never take a souvenir from a villain no matter how tempting it is. That was an exception. It had to do with someone I knew personally. Wait a minute. Hold everything. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I still don't quite understand this. Why reveal your secret to me? Well, I'm glad you asked. Take a look at this. Bible team missing in action. No return confirmed after setting out to apprehend Professor E. Merritt of Snortenskopf. Public still questions about Bible team's whereabouts. This is the newer Bible team led by my good friend Josh Carpenter. He took my place as Bibleman when I retired. I felt pretty devastated when I read this article. I didn't want to believe that something terrible had happened to some of my closest friends. I thought, if there's no Bibleman now, what's next? I felt something had to be done. As long as evil is still out there and there's no one else to protect the weak and stand up for what's right. I came out of retirement and resumed the duty God had called me to. I had to reclaim this old Bible cave since Mobile Mission Command was locked from the outside. When I was little, I was always excited to hear the stories my dad told me of his adventures. But about two months ago, when he told me he was going back to being Bible man regularly, I couldn't help but worry. It wasn't all bad. My dad eventually let me monitor his position through Eunice. It's better than nothing. At least now I know what you've been hiding from me. That explains why the Fibbler constantly hunted after you since he knows you and Bible Man are related. But if I'm being honest, it's a great secret. You must have the coolest dad. Well, I wouldn't want all the credit to myself. Since the second part of the mission is about to begin, that's where you come in. Eunice, give a full analysis on this glove. The glove is constructed with an elastic alloy that features the texture of human skin. The fingerprints etched at the tips match those of the deceased William Burns. That's weird. Who in their right mind would be sick enough to hurt someone while posed as a dead man? I traced the glove to the imposter the other night, who just so happens to be my worst nemesis Luxor Spondroth. Him again? How many times have you had to deal with him? One too many, apparently. But hopefully, this will be the last time and I need the both of you to come with me. Wait, what? <gasps> really? That's right. I think you're both ready to take a challenge like this head on. Me! I'm finally going on a Bible Man adventure! Wait a minute. Why me specifically? You've faced a spiritual villain before, right? You've encountered the Fibbler multiple times to the point where you were no longer afraid of him or others like him. You took a great stand, knowing Jesus will protect you. He said in Matthew 28 20, Surely I am with you always. To the very end of the age! Exactly. Alright, I guess I'm game. So, how are we going to fight? We can't go out looking like we're following a masquerade party. Don't worry about that. I'd be more than happy to provide you with some older armor that belonged to Cypher and Bible Girl. You'll be using their weapons as well. I miss those two. Eunice? Ready the chamber, my friend. You know what? You say it. So sweet! Eunice, initialize full armor sequence. Initializing full armor sequence. Waist belt of truth. Breastplate of righteousness. Shoes of peace. Shield of faith. Helmet of Salvation. Full armor sequence complete. And the sword of the spirit. Okay, that felt really cool. I know, right? Let's go!
Okay, being that this is your first time stepping out into combat, I need you to promise me to be extremely careful. You got it, Dad. We won't let you down. Good. I think our target is further this way. Well, this just tears it, doesn't it? The Fibbler's been caught, and now we gotta keep our tracks covered in case Bible Man comes at us again. This is unacceptable! You are right, dude! What do you want us to do? First order of business. Keep your mouth shut! Until I think of a plan. Am I allowed to make suggestions? If it doesn't kill you to at least try, why don't you take some of your gold fury from years ago and launch it onto the city? Once it spreads all over, everyone will be at each other's throats. It would trigger a last man standing war. You may have a point, Lucy. And this would be far too much for even Bible Man to handle. His days of being a hero are far past over! <laughs> Does this mean we have to go back to the sewer? As much as I hate to admit it. Yes. Business is business. And it's a dirty job. But someone's gotta do it. Sure thing, your vileness. Leaving so soon? The party's only about to begin. You know, you've got a consistent record for bad timing. But who's keeping track? Ooh, I see you've brought some offspring with you. That's pretty risky. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Ecclesiastes 412. Let's see if that's true. Ludicrous! Take the white-haired one! You got it, dude! Lucy, after the girl! I'm on it! Bible man is mine. Today, I'll prove to be his undoing! <laughs> Bringing your own daughter here was a big mistake. You wanna endanger her? She's stronger than you think. Isaiah 54.13 says, All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. I didn't ask for a speech. Oh, I'm gonna get you, young dude. I'm starting to get the hang of this. Dude, too easy. Hey, Lucy, trying some annoying maneuvers to throw me off? As if Eunice told me much about you. Yeah, probably to make me look so bad. Now hold still while I deliver some pain. Hey, that's enough messing with her. Try and hit me. Bringing your boyfriend along for the ride. <laughs> this will be fun. Any time now, Sarah. I got her in the range. Say what? Oh, well, darn it. Nice shot. Thanks. Ever felt anything this cool before? Not since I first saw Skill in concert. Come on, your dad might need her help. What is this? Now everyone's gotta gang up on me? Well, it was a fair fight until your henchmen easily fell one by one. Let's do this! Just like old times, you said. Shut up! You haven't won yet. I meant what I said the last time we've been through this. Temptation will always have you.
Look out! Ooh. That's gonna leave a mark. They just never learn, do they? I should congratulate you two on a job well done. You did excellent out there. Thanks, Dad. We couldn't have done it without you. All in a day's work. Well, now that the mission is finally completed, I guess my work here is done. Hold on. You're not saying what I think. I think it is. There's a time and a season for everything. But don't worry, there will always be a Bibleman. And a Bibleman will always be there. At least through you. Me? That's right. Jonathan, I've always seen much potential in you since you first came to our church. Your outspoken faith and willingness to stand up for what's right have brought you this far. I think you'd be perfect. So I'm taking your place? I don't know, sir. I. I'm not sure if I'd be up for this. After all, I'm only 16. But even younger people can do big things. Remember, when the Israelites were too frightened to fight Goliath, it ultimately took someone as small and young as David. He won against Goliath with just one stone. Today, you've proven yourself just as strong and courageous, and with the constant reminder that God is with you on this journey. If this is what God wants of me, what choice do I have? I'm in! Oh my gosh! Jonathan! You're the new Bible man? I'm so happy for you! But of course, you shouldn't do this alone. Sarah, despite the numerous times her adversaries attacked you, you remained fearless. I always hoped that someday you would be strong enough to fight back in the name of our Lord. And today, you've proven it firsthand. You made me very proud, Sarah. Or, should I say, Bible girl. Aw, thanks, Dad. Eunice, print the contract. Printing. As a closing statement, let me remind you of something very important. It's not necessarily this job of suiting up and battling evil that makes you Biblemen. Ultimately, what makes you different is your relationship with Christ. Because apart from Him, we can do nothing. That's John 15, 5. Exactly. Now promise me both of you will take good care of yourselves and each other. Take full responsibility, keep Eunice's systems updated frequently, and feel free to ask her anything about the lab if you're curious. There's an instruction manual she can guide you through, but if you can do me a big favor, it's this. Do what you can to find the Bible team and bring them back. You can count on us, sir. We won't let you down, Dad. Good. Lord, I want to thank you for these two. I ask that you continue to do your work in them as they take this next big step. Be with them as they carry on this new duty to defend the weak and fight evil in your name. Remind them that every battle belongs to you, Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. Okay, just sign the dotted line and you'll be good to go. With pleasure. Excellent. You now have complete control over the Bible cave. Well, except the tunnel bike. You'll need a driver's license for that. But everything else is yours. Thank you, sir. Truly, this is an honor. I expect you to handle this job well. I should be going now. I'll see you both tonight. See you, Dad. Later, Mr. Peterson. Please, keep in touch. Take care, Eunice. Wow. What a journey. It feels like everything went by so fast I could barely catch up. We're the new Bible man and Bible girl now. It's a lot more responsibility to take, but I'm all for it. There's no pressure, really. As long as you remember why we're doing this. Well, I have quite a lot to learn about this place. This is going to take some time to get used to. First of all, how do I get out of this suit? Return to the armor chamber as I activate the reversal function. Good to know. At least now I won't have to worry about heading back home looking like I just got out of the Halloween store. <laughs> it's 
So, since it's the weekend, how about I take you out for dinner tonight? How fancy are you willing to go? As fancy as you want. Well, it's going to be quite a lot. Uh-oh. What's going on, Eunice? There is a disturbance in progress downtown. Professor Snortenskoff is about to release a gaseous form of his in-power formula into the city. This doesn't look good. Sorry, Sarah. Dinner will have to wait. That's okay. I enjoy this new job anyway. Eunice, you know what to do. Initializing full armor sequence. The instant armor sequence works! And the new suits fit perfectly. It's a good time to put them to the test. What about me? I like to be of some help. Keep us tracked. We can use someone like you to be our eyes in the sky. You got it. You ready for this? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's go!